And Dick Hale here, Gonzaga Nation SI. This is the WCC Weekly. It is January 16th, a Monday, Martin Luther King Day. Hopefully um, you enjoyed this past weekend or the past week, excuse me, of WCC Hoops. There were some really good games. Uh, there are some, there is some separation beginning to happen. And it's about what we expected with Gonzaga and St. Mary's at the top. Uh, and then a couple of the teams in the middle of the pack are dropping and a couple are staying uh, in the middle that are maybe a little bit of a surprise, at least in my eyes, uh, but probably not in the coaches and players eyes. We'll touch on a little bit of that. Uh, I'll give you my players of the week, even though the conference hasn't announced their player of the week just yet. Uh, and then I've got an upcoming game of the week to keep an eye out for. So uh, we'll just get right into it, Gonzaga. And St. Mary's are both sitting atop the the leaders in the conference at five and zero. Oh. St. Mary's only played one game this past week. Gonzaga played two. Gonzaga obviously on Thursday night had a big road win uh, in Provo, Utah. They struggled through part of uh, the the game. Uh, they were down double figures in the second half. Uh, but you're starting to see the will to win and the the never say die. They don't give in uh, to adversity uh, from Gonzaga. And that's the sign of uh, growth, maturity, experience is starting to, to be something that they can rely upon. Um, but they were down late and they had to dig out a, a victory when it looked like they were going to lose. So th there was a number of bright spots. Uh, there was defensive stops where they forced turnovers there was extra passes down the stretch. Uh, there was made free throws. Uh, there was great um, uh, execution of timely traps in the full court, which resulted in BYU turnovers, um, giving Gonzaga an opportunity uh, with the game on the line to kind of be in a drag screen situation with Julian Strother. Then he hit a big three with about seven seconds left hit a three to, to put them up and to seal the victory before a defensive stop uh, on the final possession. But unbelievable, the last three games or three games in a row for Gonzaga on the road where three different guys on the perimeter. Uh, first, it was Regier Bolton, then Nolan Hickman, then Julian Strother made big shots in the final possession or two of the game to, to lock up a victory. So that's great to see. You're really seeing the growth. And they followed up with that game uh, by being back home and just boat racing a Portland team that um, showed a lot of promise early, has had some injuries, uh, but Gonzaga looked as good as I've seen them uh, for a good 40 minutes, 115 to 75 victory. Uh, those numbers are off the charts where they continue to climb for offensive efficiency. Last I checked, uh, Gonzaga was sitting at fourth in the country at defense or offensive efficiency. Each of the last four years, Gonzaga has led the country, not enough for offensive efficiency, although they have a couple of those years, but in points per game. And uh, it's looking to be that they're trending in that direction again. Uh, in regards to St. Mary's, they're tied at first, sitting at 5-0. and oh. Only had one game this week. Um, it was against a really good uh, LMU team on the road. And Aiden Mahaney on Thursday night, I had the call for CBS Sportsnet. Aiden Mahaney looked uh, every bit of a freshman who is ready to play um, and ready to contribute. And there's a reason why uh, Coach Randy Bennett has hand, handled, handed him the ball, um, which isn't always the case when you go to, to St. Mary's. You have to bide your time, wait your time. Um, he had 25 points in the victory against um, LMU, tying a career high. Oddly enough, he had 25 points in his first game of his uh, career. He followed that up with a Saturday game against San Francisco, where they won by 17, which, uh, again, not a diff not an easy place to play. Uh, followed up with a road win by 17 points. Aiden Mahady, another good game with 21 points. And I'll just cut to the chase right there. My two players of the week, uh, it's a tie. It is Aiden Mahaney with... St. Mary's and Julian Strother because of the big three to win it in Provo on the road. So those are my players of the week. I got that out of the way early. You're looking at the next tier now, and BYU sits at four and two, Santa Clara three and two, Pacific three and two, and LMU at three and three. I would call that the next tier right now where 
somebody gets on a run, they can differentiate themselves with the third seed and the fourth fourth seed in the conference tournament. And that's really important because you get a bye uh, in that first round of the conference tournament. But BYU uh, got an important game this week against Santa Clara, who sits at three and two. So to me, the upcoming big game of the week is BYU at Santa Clara. That's going to be a big time showdown. Uh, Santa Clara also plays St. Mary's early or excuse me, on Saturday at home. So really big week coming up for Santa Clara. Uh, you know, if they could split, they're still sitting um, in a in a good position where they're uh, third or fourth. If they were to lose both, they fall below 500 in conference at three and four. Pacific at three and two, uh, they continue to surprise people. They continue to play really well. It gets more difficult this week as Gonzaga travels down to Stockton to play on the 20th, or excuse me, on Saturday the 21st. LMU's at three and three. They've got an opportunity uh, this week, I think, to pick up at least one win. Last week was tough for them. Um, you know, they have uh, haven't been able to. Um, they they have not lost consecutive games all season long until this past week, when they had the chance to right the ship on Thursday um, and, and beat St. Mary's. Uh, so they have now lost two in a row. That hasn't happened all season long, as I had mentioned. USD sitting at two and four. Uh, they're getting some good production individually, but they got to put things together collectively. University of Portland, the pilots sitting at one and four. They beat USF, which um, was great for them, but USF is really reeling now in league after a terrific non-conference. And then, as mentioned, they got uh, boat raced by Gonzaga, 115 to 75. We had Shantae Leggins on uh, one of our podcasts earlier in the week uh, previewing the Gonzaga game. And, you know, he talked about he really likes his team. They got versatility. They've got toughness. They've got skill. Um, but they've had just enough injuries at the wrong time to the right to the wrong guys where they haven't been able to, to find their flow and, and be consistent on both ends of the floor. Um, sometimes it's one game missed. Sometimes it's two games missed. Uh, but that's practice time and, and gelling. That's uh, game time where rotations are different. Uh, so it's been difficult. But uh, he does a great job. I think they'll they'll start turning the corner and playing much better the second half of conference. USF, uh, another frustrating and struggle of a week for them. Uh, they lost both games to Portland as well as uh, to St. Mary's. So they're sitting at one and five. Uh, they got to get things turned around quickly because many teams or many people predicted them to finish third in the league. I I thought that they would challenge for third. I really like Santa Clara. BYU is always going to kind of be in that mix uh, for third. Um, but USF, they got to get things kind of turned around now. Uh, and then Pepperdine sitting at 0-5. Uh, they might be the most confusing team in the league as far as their talent level is maybe as good as anybody's. Um, but what you want to see now with that talent level, because it is young, three really good sophomores and a good freshman, um, you you want that talent and that potential to start turning into experience and production. And that doesn't necessarily mean production in points per game, rebounds per game, et cetera. You want that production to turn into wins. Um, and so that's got to turn around pretty quickly now for Pepperdine. But again, they've got the talent for it. So again, you look at players of the week, I split it between Strother and Aiden Mahaney. I've always been a big believer that, you know, players of the week need to be on a on teams that are performing well. Doesn't mean you have to go two and zero for the week. You could maybe go one and one, uh, but you can't uh have your numbers, you can't have your performances uh not impact the win-loss column. Uh the games game of the week for me coming up is going to be BYU at Santa Clara on Thursday. Uh, BYU, if they they lose, they fall to four and three. And then if that becomes obviously a win for Santa Clara, they move to four and three, and then they would have the tiebreaker at this moment in time. Uh, so they would be in third place in the league. So that's a very important game. That's at Santa Clara. We all know if you're a Gonzaga fan, Santa Clara played Gonzaga tough at home uh, just a week or so ago. So really good one to look out for. And then that's followed for Santa Clara by a, a game at St. Mary's where uh, they could, they could really kind of show what they're all about, um, you know, and, and really kind of put a stamp on that third place. If they were able to come up with a road win on Saturday at St. Mary's, this is the time of the year that the net starts really kind of uh, being talked about. 
uh, being uh, something that analysts, fans, coaches really start diving into. Uh, the NCAA tournament committee obviously uses the the net as probably their their strongest indicator of, of, of value for a team. And the WCC is is really strong in the net right now. Uh, in years past, they would have a couple teams that have been in the 200s with the net, which means those wins are basically quad fours. And, and you don't want to – any quad four loss, if you're a team that's looking to get in the NCAA tournament, is not good. Um, and that's why you're, you see the, the importance of scheduling and taking care of, of victories. You know, St. Mary's schedule has gotten better in recent years because they've scheduled more quad two games in particular. They've tried to get quad ones. But if you win quad twos – and don't drop any quad threes or quad fours, you're really doing yourself a, a favor. But uh, to to stay on the net, only two teams above 200 in the net in the league, and that's USD at 222, Pacific at 225. And then when you look at the, the teams in the net that are uh, you know, for sure in the tournament, and then if they make a move, they could be on the bubble. Uh, you're looking at St. Mary's actually is above Gonzaga in the net. They're sitting at eight in the net. Gonzaga sitting at nine in the net. I don't necessarily expect any of those to change unless one of the two teams is to lose uh, before they match up on February 4th, which is in about two weeks. So that's should uh, provide a, a top 10 net matchup. Now, the disappointing thing for me, though, is St. Saint Mary, excuse me, isn't ranked in either the AP or the coaches poll. That should change in my, my guess this week. But uh, last week they were just getting a few votes. They're too good of a team both when you watch them and too good of a team when you look at the numbers that they shouldn't be in, in either of the two main polls. Uh, then the two other teams that I mentioned in uh, being uh, above 100 um, would be Santa Clara sitting at 80, BYU sitting at 91. And I already previewed that as possibly uh, being the game of the week to watch. That's really important. Um, you know, what you really want to start seeing is teams, you want to see one or two more teams creep above that 75 line because there's a differentiating factor between beating a uh, top 75 team on the road uh, versus a 76 ranked team on the road. And we'll get into that as we get closer to the NCAA tournament, what exactly the net means, what a quad one, quad two, quad three, and quad four uh, win look like what those mean in the eyes of the selection committee, but all in all another good week in the WCC. Um, you, you're starting to see Gonzaga and St. Mary's truly separate themselves. Those two battles that they're going to have this year, February 4th in Moraga and February 25th in Spokane at the McCarthy Athletic Center uh, are going to be absolute battles. So Gonzaga starting to click on all cylinders. If you're a Gonzaga fan, you've got to enjoy it. Um, if you are a Gonzaga fan, like, click, and subscribe and review uh, to any and all of our podcasts with Gonzaga Nation Media Network, whether it's the ISO with myself, Sack and Jack with Rob Sacre, um, whether it's our women's basketball pod with Stephanie Hawk Freeman or Gonzaga Nation SI with myself and Adam Morrison. We try to bring you lots of content through the week and from many different viewpoints and many different angles. Take care. Have a great week. This has been the WCC Weekly.